The Dallas Cowboys just routed the Browns on the road 33-17, to and this game never really felt close. At one point, it was 27-3. to There were some really great things from the Cowboys in this win, and there were some things that need to be cleaned up. But I think the Cowboys proved a lot of people wrong in this game, including myself, so let's get into it. Coming into this game, I didn't really know what to expect from the Browns. I knew that they had a good defense, good corners, Miles Garrett would be a problem at times, and all of those things were true. But none of those things ruined the game for Dallas like I thought that they could. On offense, Dak and the receivers were playing with a really nice rhythm. They were picking up first downs consistently. CeeDee Lamb looked like the CD that we saw last season. Brandon Cooks was getting involved, and Ezekiel Elliott even looked a bit rejuvenated as well. I liked it. This is how the Cowboys won games in 2023. Just like this, jump on a team early, turn the game into a track meet, and then make the other offense just get out of their plan by putting up points. Going into this game, a big talking point was the Cowboys' two rookie offensive linemen, Cooper Beebe at center, Tyler Guyton at left tackle. And overall, without watching the film, just watching the live broadcast, I thought Guyton and BB held up pretty well. Yes, Miles Garrett had a few moments early in this game that started to worry me. I mean, we mentioned it over and over that's a heck of an assignment for a rookie left tackle in their first NFL game. Was it perfect? No. But the Cowboys did a few things to help Guyton with chip blocks, double teams, and Garrett didn't completely wreck the game. I do want to see what it looked like on film, but overall, Guyton had his moments, Miles Garrett had his, and the Cowboys were able to run their offense efficiently, at least earlier in the game. For Cooper Beebe, he was playing his first game at center in his first NFL game. And I want to see the film on him as well, but I did notice a few really nice plays in pass protection. He was holding up the front of the pocket using that strength and power that we talked about. Having two rookies start week one of the NFL season against this front could have been much worse, and I feel better about both of these guys after this game. And I need to go back and re-watch, but I thought that they did some nice things in the run game as well. I was happy to see that the Cowboys facilitated the run game a little bit with C.D. Lamb, something that me and Foots had talked about on our podcast. And the run game wasn't great, but they did average four yards per carry, and it worked out for the most part. Early in this game, Dallas had more success throwing the ball and running the ball than I thought that they would. It felt like both the run and pass game were just nice and steady. Early, the offense was good, but after halftime, everything just completely started to sputter out. The play calling wasn't good, Dak had some missed opportunities, the run game struggled to move the ball. It was what I was worried about happening for the entirety of the game, but luckily it was only the second half. And luckily, the Cowboys had a 27-3 lead, and it didn't really end up costing them anything but a learning experience. I would have liked to have seen more from that unit in the second half, and I keep having to tell myself, this is the first week of the NFL season. These guys haven't played together in more than 250 days. The 2023 offense that ended up being the number one offense in the NFL last year did take a little bit of time to get going. So at least we saw some flashes early in this game at least in the first half, and hopefully as the season goes on, we see more and more complete games. Really quick, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, BetUS. If you're looking for the best odds for the NFL season, Cowboys futures, live in-game betting, whatever you need, BetUS has you covered. They have huge bonuses, great odds, and fast payouts. Plus, new customers get a 125% sign-up bonus on their first three deposits. Deposit $20, get $25 more to play with. The link to sign up is in the description of today's video. Now, let's talk about the defensive side of the ball, a unit that had a pretty complete game. Honestly, outside of one drive that really mattered, they were flawless. Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, Eric Kendricks, Demarvion Overshone, Trayvon Diggs, Jordan Lewis, Kalen Carson, Donovan Wilson. I could name off all of the guys that caught my eye in this game with a splash play or a big tackle, but I'd just end up listing the entire defense. And you can't mention this defense without mentioning Mike Zimmer because Mike Zimmer and the pass rushers were giving Deshaun Watson fits tonight. I saw like three or four people tweet out that Deshaun Watson was going to be having nightmares 
about this front. I thought that Zimmer did a lot of the things that we expected him to do as a defensive mind when the Cowboys hired him as a coordinator. He was rolling coverages, he was mugging the line at scrimmage, dropping those linebackers that looked like they were blitzing back into coverage. He was really making Watson read a lot of things post-snap. And in doing that, Watson was sacked six times in this game. You could tell he was confused or surprised at times and the ball just wasn't coming out on time. And of course it helped that there was pressure from every single direction. Osa Odigizua up the middle, Micah on the outside, Demarcus Lawrence had a sack. The offensive line for the Browns was getting dominated all game long and Watson does not play well under pressure as you see. And the second level of this defense behind the defensive line, the linebackers. This might have been some of the best linebacker play that we've seen since Sean Lee was healthy and on the field for Dallas. Overshone is really that guy. Eric Kendricks was making play after play. Damone Clark was solid. This defense is going to have legit linebacker play this year, and I fully expect that DeMarvion Overshone is a big piece to this unit's success. His closing speed and just overall read and react, his athletic ability is such a weapon. I felt like every single drive there was one moment where I'm like, damn. The Cowboys also did a really good job of the run game. Jerome Ford only averaged 3.7 yards per carry. Pierre Strong Jr. average five, but that was only on two carries. The Cleveland running backs only ran for 54 yards combined. Now on the outside, shout out to the rookie, Kalen Carson, a fifth round pick. He was tasked with Amari Cooper, Jerry Judy, and I thought he played tremendously. Again, like any rookie in their first NFL game, he certainly wasn't perfect and even had a few chances at interceptions he could have hauled in, but overall, he was up to the task from the jump. Carson is not a fifth round player. That's someone that fell to the fifth round and he shouldn't have. I was really impressed and with Deron Bland out for the next five to six weeks, Halen Carson gave me a lot of reassurance that this defensive back room is going to be just fine. I thought all of the corners played well. Diggs, Lewis, Carson, all three of those guys were really good. The Dallas defense was so dominant, they allowed just two third down conversions all game long. The Browns were two of 15 on third down. It was really a dominating game from the start for this unit, and the offense did their part early on to help get out to a lead and really put this game away by midway through the third. I really think that the Cowboys proved a lot of people wrong in this game. All of that negative offseason talk about how many players they lost, their lack of moves in free agency, the contract stuff. People really thought that this team would stink compared to the last three years. They thought they would take a major step back, which now seems absurd. They just went on the road against a playoff team from last year and dominated them in every facet of the game with a rookie corner, a rookie center, and rookie left tackle. I don't think people were really expecting that. One more quick thing before we go, Jake Ferguson did go down in this game with a knee injury. Reports say that he avoided an ACL tear and he'll have an MRI on that knee tomorrow, so make sure you look out for updates on that. Hopefully he's okay because that would have been a huge loss for this team. But that's all I got for you guys today. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more Cowboys content. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's a Cowboys win. More videos coming this week. I love you all. Bye.